how do we find out the density of states let's uh, do it in one dimension for simplicity of course let's consider a boundary value problem for vibration we consider one dimensional line of n plus 1 particles and it has a length l so it looks like this and uh, the end atoms are fixed so this one is fixed this one is also fixed because we are interested in stationary modes the lattice constant is a that is the separation between two such atoms here s equals 0 here s equals n plus 1 n sorry that makes it n plus 1 atoms and the displacement of this atom is marked as us so we suppose that the particles at s equals 0 and at s equals n this particle here and this particle here these two are fixed Therefore, each normal vibration mode of polarization P has the form of a standing wave where U s is the displacement of particles. U s is the displacement of particle s. How do we express U s then? We have done it earlier. U s is given as U not u0 exponential of minus i omega kp t times sin s k a so omega k p this quantity is related to the wave vector by the dispersion relation wave vector is k and uh, the dispersion relation is something we did not determine yet the wave vector k is restricted by the fixed end boundary condition so we will have the values of k allowed values of k equals pi over l twice pi over l thrice pi over l so on up to n minus 1 pi over l and if we now solve for k equals pi over l we will get u s to be proportional to sin s pi a over l from here. And it will vanish at s equals 0 and s equals n as we require from the boundary condition. The solution for k equals n pi over l that is the maximum value there we will have 
for k equals n pi over l that is pi over a equals k max we will have us proportional to sin s pi this permits no motion of any atom because sin s pi vanishes at each atom therefore there are n minus 1 allowed independent values of k as we have written down here this number is equal to the number of particles allowed to move each allowed value of k is associated with a standing wave and for one dimensional line there is one mode for each interval interval means delta k equals pi over l this part is an interval and for each interval there is one phonon mode therefore the number of modes per unit range it is given as l over pi for k less than equals pi over a in this range and if we go beyond this that means that will take us outside the first Brillouin zone it will become 0 for k greater than equals pi over a there is no point in going beyond the Brillouin zone that doesn't represent anything physical there are three polarizations that means there would be three different p indices for a one dimensional uh, for each value of k in one dimension two of these would be transverse and one would be longitudinal in three dimension the polarization is not this simple only for wave vectors in certain special crystal directions there would be three normal modes and otherwise it could be complicated now we need to find out the density of states d omega is our density of states the number of modes per unit frequency range for a given polarization that is the density of states that we are interested in so d1 omega d omega this quantity is written down as l over pi dk d omega times d omega which is l over pi d omega over d omega d k the dispersion uh, the group velocity the dispersion this can be obtained from dispersion relation so we can obtain the group velocity that is this quantity here d omega d k from the dispersion relation and there is a singularity if this quantity if the dispersion relation becomes horizontal if omega as a function of k is flat if the first order derivative goes to zero then there is a singularity in the density of states Okay, now we will discuss the density of states in three dimension.
we apply periodic boundary condition over n cube primitive cells. If we consider a cube with side L, and with these this arrangement, k vector can be determined using the condition exponential of i k x. x plus k y y plus k z z this according to the periodic boundary condition would be exponential of i k x x plus l plus k y y plus l plus k z z plus l. If we have k x k y and k z to be 0, or plus minus twice pi over L or plus minus 4 pi over L up to n pi over L. This condition has to be satisfied. And so, with k, these values of kx, ky and kl, these are the boundary conditions and from here we would find that there is one allowed value of k per twice pi over l cubed of volume in k space. This shows us there is one allowed value of k per twice pi over l cubed volume in the k space. And this is for each polarization branch. If the volume of our specimen is V equals L cubed because it is cubic, the total number of modes with wave vector less than k equals L over twice pi cubed times the volume of the sphere of radius k that can be given as uh, n equals L over twice pi cubed times the volume of the sphere of radius k 4 over 3 pi k cubed. 
this is the total number of modes with wave vector less than k. and this is for each polarization type. Then the density of state for each polarization type becomes d omega equals dn d omega which is v k squared over twice pi squared d k d omega. Now we need to find out C v and the density of states is available with us but we do not know the value of this, we do not know the dispersion relation yet. So, we do not know how omega depends on k. So, we cannot calculate this quantity yet and for that we take the help of Debye where he developed a model for density of states and that will help us find out this dispersion relation and then calculate the heat capacity. So, let us focus on the Debye model for the density of states. In the Debye approximation, the velocity of sound is taken as constant for each polarization type as it would be in the classical continuum limit, elastic continuum limit. So, the dispersion relation would be given as omega equals a constant velocity times k, v is a constant. The velocity of sound is a constant in this case that is what Debye assumed and if we put this kind of an expression the density of states as we have calculated here in this expression would become v omega squared over twice pi squared v cube. Just put uh, the relation this relationship here and you will get this quantity. So, this is the density of states that Debye model gives us and if there are n primitive cells in the sample, the total number of acoustic phonon modes would also be n. as we have discussed earlier. Therefore, we can put a cutoff frequency uh, by integrating this equation we would be exhausted with the number of acoustic phonons by that cutoff frequency. We can write omega d which is the Debye frequency or the cutoff frequency cubed of this equals 6 pi squared v cube n over v. This 
expression is obtained by integrating this one here. If you integrate this density of states with respect to omega, then you will get omega cubed over 3 here. That is what you will get from here and 3 times 2 is 6. And this part, the left hand side of this equation will give you the number of acoustic phonons that is n. Therefore, omega cubed omega d cubed would have this kind of an expression. To this frequency, there corresponds a cutoff wave vector in k space. The corresponding cutoff wave vector k d is according to this dispersion relation omega d over v which is 6 pi squared n over the volume cube root of this quantity. In the Debye model, we do not allow modes of wave vector longer than kd. Longer than kd is not allowed, it is cut off there. The number of modes within k less than equals kd has to be considered and this exhausts the number of degrees of freedom that is available with us that uh, is that comes from the acoustic modes of phonon available with us. So, the internal that is thermal energy is given by u equals integration over d omega, the density of states, average number times h cross omega. This would give us the, uh, the internal energy and the range of this integral would be from 0 to omega d because beyond that we do not have phonons available, we are exhausted up to omega d. d omega, the density of states v omega squared over twice pi squared v cubed assuming constant velocity of sound within a certain range of omega of course times h cross omega over e power h cross omega over tau minus 1, the Planck function. This is the energy for each polarization type. For simplicity, we assume that the phonon velocity is independent of polarization. And if we assume that, we can multiply uh, this expression by 3 to obtain the internal energy. So, by multiplying with 3, we obtain u equals 3 v h cross over twice pi squared v cubed integration from 0 to omega d d omega times omega cubed this square here and omega here becomes cubed over e power h cross omega over tau minus 1. Now, we substitute x equals h cross omega over tau that is h cross omega over k b t. If we do this, we obtain u equals 3 v k b power 4 
t power 4 over twice pi squared v cubed h cross cubed integration 0 to x d dx x cube over e power x minus 1 x d the upper limit of the integral is h cross omega d over k b t which we write as theta over t theta has the dimension of temperature so we call it debye temperature this can be expressed as h cross v over k b 6 pi squared n over v cube root of this. So, the total phonon energy u can be written after doing all these mathematics as 9 times n k b t t over theta cubed integration 0 to x d x cubed over e power x minus 1 where n is the number of atoms in the sample and x d equals theta over t as we have found out earlier. Now comes the heat capacity. We have found out the internal energy. So, the heat capacity is del u del t at constant volume equals C v, the lattice contribution of course, equals 3 v h cross squared over twice pi squared v cubed k b t squared integration from 0 to omega d d omega omega power 4 e power h cross omega over tau divided by e power h cross omega over tau minus 1 squared which is 9 n k b t over theta cubed integration 0 to x d dx x power 4 e power x over e power x minus 1 squared. If we have temperature much greater than the Debye temperature, the heat capacity approaches the classical value 3 n k b. How about the opposite limit at very low temperature? We may approximate u by letting the upper limit go to infinity.
So, we do not restrict it at x d, we make it infinity because that does not matter, the temperature is very low. So, we have integration 0 to infinity d x x cubed over e power x minus 1 equals integration from 0 to infinity dx x cubed sum over s equals 1 to infinity exponential minus sx. This quantity becomes 6 times s equals 1 to infinity sum, summed over 1 over s power 4 which is pi power 4 over 15. This is the standard sum. So, the internal energy can be approximately written as 3 pi power 4 n kbt power 4 over 5 theta cubed for very low temperature, temperature much less than theta. And if that is the case, then Cv can be approximately written as 12 pi power 4 over 5 n kb t over theta cubed, which is by putting these uh, values, we can write 2, 3, 4 n kb t over theta cubed. So, the Cv goes as temperature cubed if the temperature is pretty low. This is known as the Debye T cube law. So, we have evaluated two limits. In one limit, temperature was much larger than the Debye temperature, where the Cv became a constant and approached the classical value. And when the temperature is very low, the Cv goes as temperature cubed. For intermediate temperature, we will have to explicitly evaluate this integral here to find out u and then take the temperature derivative of u to find out Cv, which is a more difficult task. But that gives a reasonable value of Cv that matches quite well with experiment. So, this is all about phonons that we wanted to discuss.